Hey everyone, you ever feel like your brain's just not working right? Kind of like it's stuck in the mud? Like you can't think clearly. Yeah, especially when it starts to get cold outside. You know what? That's actually a thing. Really? Yeah, a study from the National Library of Medicine found that cold weather can actually make brain fog worse. So even when we warm back up, our brains are still... It can affect your attention span, how fast you process things, multitasking, and even your memory. And it can linger even after you're warm. Wow, that's wild. So we could all use a little extra brain power as we head into winter. Definitely. Well, luckily for us, we've got some great research and expert advice on specific foods that can help sharpen our minds. That's right. We're going to dive into five food categories recommended by wellness expert Brian Clark. And they all have to do with nourishing your brain and your gut. Okay, so a happy gut equals a happy brain. You got it. I'm intrigued. Let's hear it. What's first on the list? Animal protein. So fish, eggs, and poultry. Those are packed with complete proteins, which means they have all the essential amino acids our bodies need. Ah, so it's like we're building a house. We need all the right materials for a strong foundation. Exactly. And those amino acids, they're the building blocks for brain function. Mm. And they even play a role in mood regulation. I am always here for a mood boost, especially during those gloomy winter days. For sure. Speaking of mood, can't forget about those delicious little fish like sardines and mackerel. Oh, yeah. They're full of those brain-boosting omega-3s, right? Yes. And you know that feeling when your gut is happy after a delicious meal? Yeah. Well, fatty fish can actually amplify that feeling and boost your brain power at the same time. What? Yeah, omega-3s. They're crucial for keeping the connection strong between brain cell membranes. And that's really important for how our brains work overall. So, like, there are tiny electricians making sure all the signals in our brain are firing correctly. I like that analogy. And here's another interesting thing. Omega-3s have anti-inflammatory properties, which can be really helpful for managing, even preventing certain brain disorders like depression. Wait, so inflammation in the brain can contribute to depression? It's an area of ongoing research, but some studies are showing that chronic inflammation in the brain could be a contributing factor to depression. Huh. And the anti-inflammatory effects of omega-3s may play a role in mitigating that inflammation. Wow, these tiny fish are little powerhouses. I'm already thinking about all the delicious ways to add more of them to my diet. <laughs> okay, what's next on our brain-boosting menu? Another breakfast favorite. Okay. Eggs. Ooh, I do love a good omelet. But what makes eggs so good for our brains? They're loaded with vitamin B, which can reduce the risk of dementia and strokes. And they also contain choline, which is great for mood and memory. Hold on, choline. Remind me what that is again. It helps form the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. Oh, right. Acetylcholine. And what does that do again? Well, it's essential for a whole range of brain functions, like learning memory and muscle control. So it's like the messenger in our brains helping different parts talk to each other. Exactly. Wow. Eggs are fueling our brain's communication system. That's incredible. Okay, next up, I'm excited to talk about berries. Oh, yeah. I read an article recently about how they're like tiny superfoods for our brains. What makes them so special? They're rich in polyphenols, which act as prebiotics. And those prebiotics, they feed the good bacteria in our gut, right? You got it. And remember, a happy gut equals a happy brain. Right. I love that. So we've got animal protein, laying the foundation, fatty fish, keeping the communication lines, strong eggs, providing energy and support, and berries, keeping our gut bacteria happy. What's the final ingredient in this brain-boosting recipe? Leafy greens. Oh, leafy greens. I'll admit, sometimes I need a little extra motivation to eat my spinach. Well, this might help. Leafy greens are packed with antioxidants, which protect brain cells from damage. They also improve blood flow to the brain, which helps with vision, memory, and even comprehension. So it's not just about having energy. It's about having mental clarity and sharpness to tackle whatever comes our way. Exactly. And some studies suggest that eating leafy greens can even help reduce cognitive decline. Wow, that's powerful. It sounds like we've got a whole arsenal of delicious weapons to combat brain fog and support our cognitive health. It's amazing how much power these everyday foods have. Isn't it fascinating? Yeah. And it makes you wonder if these foods benefit both our gut and brain health in such remarkable ways. What other dietary connections might we be overlooking? That is a great question. I'm already eager to dive deeper and explore even more ways to nourish our brains and bodies. But first, I think we could all use a little break. We'll be back soon to continue our exploration of brain-boosting strategies. We're back and ready to keep going with our deep dive into brain-boosting strategies. Before the break, we were talking about how powerful food can be when it comes to fighting that brain fog and supporting cognitive health. Like a secret weapon. Right. 
But sometimes it can feel a little overwhelming. Like, where do I even begin? Do I have to completely change everything I eat overnight? Not at all. It's all about those small changes that add up over time. Okay, that makes me feel better. So let's go back to those five food categories we talked about and break down how to make them part of our everyday lives. Sounds good. Okay, so first up, animal protein, fish, eggs, poultry, all great sources of those complete proteins. Right. What are some easy ways to make sure we're getting enough of these throughout the day? Well, one trick is to think about protein at every meal. Oh, okay. You don't need a huge portion, but try to include some animal protein in your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Got it. So like eggs or Greek yogurt with some nuts for breakfast. Exactly. Okay, what about lunch and dinner? For lunch, you could have a salad with grilled chicken or fish a turkey sandwich or even leftovers from a protein-rich dinner. Mm, leftovers. That's a great idea. Saves time and reduces food waste. Exactly. Sure. And for dinner? Salmon, a lean cut of beef, or even a lentil soup with some added chicken or fish. All right, those are some great ideas. It's like building a protein puzzle throughout the day. I like that. Okay, but what about snacks? Any protein-packed snacks to help us get through that afternoon slump? Of course. Hard-boiled eggs, a handful of almonds, or some string cheese are all good options. Got it. So protein power-ups throughout the day. Exactly. Okay. I'm already feeling more energized just thinking about it. Now let's talk about those fatty fish. We know they're packed with those omega-3s, but sometimes it's hard to eat enough of them. I agree. So what are your tips for making fatty fish a regular part of our diet? Aim for at least twice a week. Okay. You can grill it, bake it, or even add it to salads. One of my favorite quick and easy meals is a salad with some canned salmon avocado and a sprinkle of nuts. That sounds good. I've actually been adding canned sardines to my salads lately. They add so much flavor. That's great. But for those who might not be the biggest fish fans, are there any other ways to get those omega-3s? Definitely. You could talk to your doctor about taking a supplement. Okay. And there are also plant-based sources like flax seeds and chia seeds, which you can easily add to smoothies or sprinkle on yogurt or salads. So many options. Okay, next up, let's talk about another breakfast staple eggs. They're so versatile, but I'm always looking for creative ways to enjoy them. Me too. You can poach them, soft boil them, bake them into frittatas or quiches, add them to stir fries or soups, or even use them to make healthy baked goods. Wow, so many possibilities. The possibilities are endless. I love that. Okay, now onto those delicious brain-boosting berries. Nature's candy. Right. They're so easy to just grab and eat. You can have them fresh frozen or even dried. Yeah. Add them to yogurt, oatmeal smoothies, or just snack on them throughout the day. I always keep a bag of frozen berries in my freezer for smoothies. And sometimes you just need a handful of berries to satisfy that sweet craving. I agree. What about you? What are your favorite ways to enjoy berries? I, I love to add them to my yogurt parfaits in the morning. Or make a berry compote to top pancakes or waffles. Oh, that sounds good. And if I'm feeling a little indulgent, I might bake a berry trumble or pie using less sugar and whole wheat flour. So you're still getting those benefits. Yes. I love that. Okay, finally, let's talk about those leafy greens. Like kale and spinach. Right. I think we all know we should be eating more of them, but sometimes it's tough to get past that salad idea. I hear you. But leafy greens can be a lot more versatile than we think. Okay, I'm listening. One of my favorite ways to sneak in more greens is by adding spinach to my smoothies. You can't even taste it. That's a great tip. I've also been trying to add kale to soups and stews. That's a good one. What are some other ways to use leafy greens? You can saute kale or spinach with garlic and olive oil. Easy and delicious. Right. You can also add them to pasta sauces, stir fries, or even blend them into dips and spreads. Wow, those are some great ideas. It's like we've opened up a whole new world of possibilities for leafy greens. Right. I'm feeling inspired to get creative in the kitchen, but food is just one part of the equation, right? What other lifestyle things can we focus on to support our brain health? You're right. Food is a great foundation, but there are other lifestyle factors that play a key role in keeping our brains functioning at their best. Okay, so what else can we do to give our brains that extra boost? Let's start with something that's essential for both our physical and cognitive health. Mm -hmm. What's that? Sleep. Oh, sleep. I do love a good night's sleep. I know I feel so much better when I've slept well. But why is sleep so important for our brains? When you sleep, your brain is busy consolidating memories, clearing out toxins, and basically hitting the reset button. So it's like a nightly spa treatment for our minds. Exactly. We're back and we're talking all about keeping our brains in tip-top shape. Before the break, we were talking about how important sleep is for our cognitive function. Like, it's amazing to think that while we're sleeping, our brains are actually hard at work. They are. Cleaning up and recharging for the day ahead. Yeah. 
It's like a nightly spa treatment for our minds. I like that analogy. Yeah. It really is crucial to maintaining a sharp and healthy brain. It's not just about feeling rested. It's about giving our brains that time and space they need to do their thing. Okay, so how much sleep do we actually need to be getting? Is there a magic number? Well, most adults need around seven to nine hours of good quality sleep per night. Okay, but it's not just about the quantity. It's also about quality, exactly. right? Exactly. So how can we improve our sleep quality? Hmm, that's a good question. Are there any easy things we can do in our daily routines to make sure we're getting the most out of our sleep? Absolutely. One of the best strategies is to create a regular sleep routine. So try to go to bed and wake up around the same time every day, even on weekends. So it's like setting that internal alarm clock. Yeah, exactly. It helps regulate your body's natural sleep-wake cycle, so it's easier to fall asleep and wake up feeling refreshed. That makes sense. But what about those nights when you just can't seem to turn your brain off? You know when your mind is racing? Oh yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Any tips for calming those mental storms before bed? For sure. Creating a relaxing bedtime routine can help. Okay, like what kinds of things? A warm bath, mm -hmm. reading a book, listening to some calming music, or even some gentle stretching or meditation. Mm hmm. Yeah, all things that signal to your body that it's time to wind down. I've also heard that the blue light from our phones and computers can mess with our sleep. That's true. I know I'm guilty of scrolling through my phone right before bed. Well, that blue light can actually suppress melatonin production. Melatonin. That's the hormone that helps regulate our sleep cycle, right? Right. So it's like you're tricking your brain into thinking it's still daytime. Oh, wow. I didn't realize it was that powerful. To minimize that effect, try to avoid screens for at least an hour before bed. Okay, I'm going to try that. What if you can't avoid screens? You can try using blue light blocking glasses or apps that filter out the blue light. Good to know. It's amazing how these small changes can really make a difference in our sleep quality. Okay, so we've talked about sleep. What other lifestyle changes can we make to help our brains? Exercise is a big one. Oh, exercise. I know I should do it more often. But what kind of exercise is best for brain health? Do I have to be training for a marathon? Not at all. Any type of exercise that gets your heart rate up is good for your brain. Okay, so that could be walking, dancing, swimming. Exactly. Just find something you enjoy and do it regularly. I like that exercise doesn't have to be a chore. It shouldn't be. All right, so we've got sleep exercise. What else? Don't forget about mental stimulation. Oh, right. Our brains need workouts, too. Exactly. Challenge yourself mentally. It could be reading, doing puzzles, learning a new language or skill, playing a musical instrument or even just having engaging conversations. So many options. I've been trying to learn a new language and it's definitely a brain workout. It is, it's like you're opening up new pathways in your brain, creating new connections and strengthening existing ones. Wow, that's pretty cool. So it sounds like we should be taking care of ourselves holistically, you know, nourishing our minds and bodies. Absolutely. When we prioritize our well-being, our brains thrive. I love that. This deep dive has been amazing. I feel like I've learned so much about how to take care of my brain. It's been my pleasure. I'm feeling inspired and ready to put all of these tips into action. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us today. Of course. Keep those brains sharp, and we'll see you next time for another deep dive. And that's it for today's show. We hope you enjoyed exploring all these brain-boosting foods and lifestyle strategies. Remember, a healthy brain is the foundation for a happy and fulfilling life. So take care of your amazing brains, and until next time, stay curious.